Today, we're going to put the internet's most popular advice and those peddling it on trial. At the heart of today's proceedings is this question. Are internet checklists and influencers helping you with their advice, or are they sabotaging your adventures? Now, we all work hard and have limited time and resources to explore our world. In many cases, we are making a significant investment when we plan a trip. And it's not at all unsurprising that we want the best possible return on that investment. Knowing this, companies and internet personalities compile convenient checklists of quote-unquote must-dos or top tens, allowing travelers to simply copy and paste the allegedly critical activities and destinations necessary for a successful trip. I make perfect copies by just turning a knob and pushing a button. But should you trust them? We've all seen the reports of influencers licking toilet seats or purposefully crashing their planes in order to drive views and increase their online following so that they can ultimately shill for their sponsors. Then there are influencers that give away money, effectively turning their channels into a lottery to drive engagement. Now, none of these strategies suggest even the most minute level of trustworthiness. Though, for many, it's hard to look away when someone is licking toilet seats or promising their followers money. And as a result, internet algorithms reward and advance channels that deal in these sorts of deceptions. But there are other strategies, very popular strategies, that are employed by internet personalities that are similarly advanced by cold, ignorant algorithms, and they're every bit as deceptive. They include bucket lists, top tens, and alleged must-dos. Now, I realize that many of you may be believers in these concepts. Many of you may even have a bucket list of your own, or perhaps you've shared your own lists of must-dos after a trip. But by the end of this video, I hope that you will consider replacing these popular terms and concepts with something far better and far more rewarding. Now, if you haven't already noticed, my content is centered around outdoor recreation. So that is the lens through which I intend to examine and condemn internet checklists and those peddling them. Though I remain skeptical, there is perhaps, when visiting an artificial location like Disneyland, a place for alleged top tens and quote unquote must do's. After all, the attractions don't move. It's relatively easy to schedule your day and plan your experiences with thousands of employees paid to give visitors the princess treatment. But nature is far more dynamic far more vast, far more splendid, far more genuine, and infinitely more unpredictable than theme parks and their artificial attractions. In fact, the most schedulable elements in nature are less predictable than most people realize. Let's take Yellowstone's Old Faithful Geyser as an example. Perhaps a visit to this wonder of nature is on your bucket list, and having seen Old Faithful erupt many, many times, it's an absolutely worthy addition to any Yellowstone itinerary. But despite its name, Old Faithful isn't as regular as people generally believe. It can go off at 30 minute intervals or 120 minute intervals. During my last visit, while wrestling three inpatient kids, the famed geyser kept crowds waiting in torrential rain for nearly an hour past its expected eruption window. And Old Faithful is about as predictable as nature gets. Even seemingly stagnant landscapes are deceptively dynamic. In fact, some of the most memorable experiences nature offers come without any warning. You simply can't plan them, nor can internet checklists ensure that you experience them. Nature's unpredictability itself nullifies the supposed value of internet checklists. The secret of a successful outdoor adventure is to sync with nature. And that takes time, because nature's rhythm bears zero resemblance to the instant gratification offered by internet culture. Internet travel lists are generally bull, and even if they do include some solid tips, sticking with our Yellowstone example, almost every quote-unquote must-do list that I've encountered online is just a parroted or even plagiarized reproduction of the information included in the map that's given to every single park visitor. Now, some internet sources, when used responsibly, can be amazing tools. But the internet is also an absurd BS buffet and has laid bare some of humanity's less inspiring tendencies. And I'm forced to ask, if the internet can get people to eat laundry detergent, light themselves on fire, point loaded guns at their genitals, and believe that the earth is flat, 
what happens when the internet's bull in social media culture is unleashed on our national parks and wilderness areas? Unfortunately, thanks to years of social media and influencer-fueled travel, we've got a pretty good idea. And the results are, in a word, discouraging. Now, it would be hard, if not completely impossible, to separate these puzzling, foolish, harmful, and ridiculous behaviors from the internet and social media culture. Bear sightings in particular pretty much always top every visitor's wish list when they tour a place like Yellowstone. But not only do visitors with a checklist mentality sabotage their prospects of seeing a bear by tending to rush from one checkpoint to another or by staying in an Airbnb, when some do see a bear, they go out of their minds and put themselves, wildlife, and others in harm's way. Take these guys. You can see it in their eyes. They're out of their skulls, feverishly chasing down a mother black bear and her cubs. This kind of behavior is ridiculous, and these individuals really should be ashamed of themselves. But they're far from the only ones that behave like this. This lady seemingly trying to test the concept of natural selection and get herself removed from the gene pool. Mother grizzlies rarely suffer fools. Had there not been so many cars around, I can practically guarantee you that this lady would have been savaged by this mother grizzly. After nervously shuffling her way back to her car, she was subsequently identified and fined thousands of dollars for her reckless social media-fueled behavior. And then, of course, there are scores of people who crowd and are often subsequently gored by bison or elk or who deep fry themselves in a thermal feature. I'm generally not a confrontational person, but I've opened my mouth on a few rare occasions when someone was haplessly endangering themselves or our irreplaceable natural treasures. On this occasion, this grizzly bear literally tackled an elk calf right next to my car and then dragged it into the trees. I stopped, as did others soon after, and before long a small pullout became a crowded parking lot. Some people couldn't see what was going on and started getting out of their cars. You guys, not a good idea. Now the guy that I spoke with here thanked me afterwards for warning him about the grizzly in the trees. But it still would have been better if he had never gotten out of his car in the first place. If you can't see why people have stopped, stay in your car until you know. Just this year, I had another incredible grizzly sighting. And while most onlookers stayed in their vehicles, a few people, long on enthusiasm and short on self-regulation, hopped out of their cars and approached these bears. One lady positioned herself between my car and the mother grizzly, very much like the woman I showed you earlier. At maybe 20 meters from this mother grizzly, I did something I've never done before. I yelled at the lady who was approaching the bears. Get back in your car, I said. That's a mother grizzly. Listen, if you want to know how to practically guarantee that you'll see a bear in Yellowstone, then make sure to stay tuned to At Home in Wild Spaces. I average between 6 and 12 bear sightings every time I visit Yellowstone, and have done so every year, often multiple times a year, for more than a decade. And no, I'm not talking about going to Bear World. There's nothing that compares to a responsible sighting of a wild, free, and yes, potentially dangerous grizzly ambling across a protected and pristine natural landscape, just as they've been doing for eons. An obese captive bear kept in a pen and fed like a pet will never compare. Every single frame of footage you see on my channel was captured by me, with only a handful of exceptions. That means that every bear you see on my channel is a bear that I encountered personally. There is no stock footage on At Home and Wild Spaces. Now, if you're satisfied with the artificial, you may well be satisfied with viewing bears in a pen or chasing internet checklists. I'm not, because for decades I've lived something better. Well, my wildlife encounters are precious to me. They reach deep into my soul and reawaken a forgotten truth, locked away in the source code of my DNA, which reminds me of my dependence on this planet and my kinship with all living things. Once you reawaken that spark, seeing normally wild animals in a cage will never suffice. I'll be putting out my Yellowstone wildlife viewing guide probably in the spring, so make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you know when that's available. But I will give you one of the best tips on seeing bears or wolves in Yellowstone right now, and it is ignore most of the internet, because most influencers aren't doing you any favors. 
Rather, they're exploiting you in our precious wild spaces. Let's take just a moment and talk about bucket lists. There's perhaps nothing as sacred in the minds of many travelers as their quote bucket list. And perhaps in its origin, there was something of merit in a list of hoped for experiences before life's clock runs out. But in many ways, bucket lists have become blinders, obstructions keeping amazing, life-changing experiences just outside the scope of what I call bucket list tunnel vision. To illustrate, let's talk about climbing the tallest, most famous mountain in the world, Everest. Do you know what it takes to climb Everest? In 2023, the average cost of summoning Everest was almost 60,000 US dollars, but price estimates vary between 30,000 and 200,000 dollars. Then there's the time expenditure. Most guides won't even take you up Everest, for good reason I would add, unless you've successfully summited a couple other highly challenging peaks. And each prerequisite trek includes its own expenses in both time and money. Then, even if you have the money and the time and permits, weather allowing, you can expect to spend around two months or more climbing, acclimatizing, climbing some more, or sitting around waiting for agreeable weather, which may never come. And in recent years, you could expect to stand in line up in the death zone for hours, waiting for just a few seconds at the top. So I ask you this, how many incredible experiences do you think you could discover for $60,000 or $100,000 in two months of your life? How many transcendent adventures could you have in that time? For me, the math just doesn't add up. Regardless of how amazing it would be to stand atop Everest, the world is packed with incredible mountains to climb, but many people can't see beyond the limitations of their bucket list. Even on a smaller scale, let's take Angel's Landing as an example. Angel's Landing has become one of the most famous trails in the world over the past decade, and subsequently has become a fixture on bucket lists for people across the globe. Now, I know Angel's Landing well. I'm from Utah, and I've made the climb to the summit numerous times and written extensively about that incredible trail and the many people who have lost their lives there. It's an incredible experience in the midst of a mesmerizing landscape that occupies only one corner of Utah's otherworldly terrain. Utah itself is only one patch in a marvelous quilt of high adventure in the western United States. But you know what? It's gotten to the point that Angel's Landing and Utah's national parks, thanks largely to promoters and influencers and their internet checklists, are now blinding people to a universe of incredible landscapes and adventures some of which are being attacked at this very moment by special interests and their operatives in government because tunnel vision for hikes and experiences like Angel's Landing are keeping people blind to everything they stand to lose. This is a pattern that I see everywhere I go. In Sequoia National Park, everyone obsesses about visiting the General Sherman Tree or driving through the tunnel log but then neglect countless other unbelievable experiences. In the redwoods, tree hunters damage and trample this amazing endangered forest, obsessed with finding the tallest tree in the world, which is a useless goal because the largest and tallest redwoods are so colossal that even a difference of 50 feet or more is completely imperceptible on the forest floor. Now, it's obvious that people want to enrich their lives by having adventures, and I wholeheartedly sympathize with that. But it's equally clear that copy and paste social media culture is sabotaging travelers and destroying the resplendent landscapes they've come to visit. But I submit to you that there is something much better and far more rewarding out there. Now, I've hiked many of the quote bucket list trails. They're often spectacular, but more and more I find myself drawn to vistas, challenges, and locations that I've discovered on a whim. And if I were to share many of them with you, Chances are that I would deny you that precious joy of personal discovery. Internet checklists are killing perhaps the most rewarding aspect of outdoor travel. Genuine, unplanned, personal discovery. And those who get conned by influencers and their bull can often plan to endure this on their vacation. Six, seven minutes. This nearly 16-mile Yellowstone traffic jam wasn't caused by wildlife, a car accident, or natural disaster. 
It was caused by people copying and pasting the internet's garbage advice. Scads of visitors to Yellowstone now follow the exact same terrible itinerary. They stay in a short-term rental in a place like Island Park or further, drive through West Yellowstone to Madison Junction, and then turn south towards Grand Prismatic Spring and Old Faithful, because both locations generally top lists of quote-unquote must-dos. But because everybody's doing the exact same thing, instead of enjoying a timely visit to these wonders, they're instead spending hours in stop-and-go traffic. Now, this recurring traffic nightmare isn't a guarantee, but it's becoming an exceedingly common occurrence, especially on holidays and weekends. And it's one of the reasons why I consider quote-unquote must-dos and top 10 lists a heinous form of sabotage and vandalism. I've been exploring Yellowstone National Park for more than 20 years at this point, and I could never compile anything resembling a credible list of top 10s or alleged must-do sites and destinations. And the very thought that influencers who have visited once, maybe twice, have any credibility is a ridiculous absurdity. This place is amazing, and if you give it time, I can promise you, you'll have an amazing experience. But you've gotta forget the internet's BS checklists. The damage that influencers and their lies inflict on you and our natural resources is remarkable. I earnestly hope that our time together can help disrupt this cycle of deception, vandalism, and abuse. If you ask me, influencers that peddle checklists or national park ranking videos are vandals. It is impossible for me to believe that they care much or at all for our national parks and wild spaces. Rather, the evidence suggests that they're just chasing check marks and couldn't care less if their garbage advice ravages our parks and wild spaces or leads you to waste your vacation in their manufactured traffic jams. Now, I'm not saying you should never visit popular areas or walk popular trails. And I want you to know that I am grateful for responsible influencers, though there are not many. This video is an earnest invitation to be skeptical of influencers in sheep's clothing and the backwards, completely inside out, copy and paste travel culture. By all means, try some of those quote unquote bucket list suggestions if you desire, but also look for the path less traveled. Slow down, simplify, make sure that you're properly prepared for whatever populates your itinerary, and show discretion in what you share of your adventures online. There's no reason to share every stop you made or to sabotage someone else by over-representing your knowledge of a given area. Share your enthusiasm, share your passion, and a message of responsible stewardship. And in doing so, you'll help undo some of the carnage that has been unleashed by internet charlatans and their garbage advice. And you know what? Sometimes the internet's garbage advice won't only sabotage your vacation, it can quite literally cost you your life. And the online discourse over guns versus bear spray is the perfect example. There is an unbelievable amount of popular and extremely dangerous advice circulating online about how to respond to a bear encounter. And after years of reviewing the internet's bull on the topic, I'm currently working on the definitive guide to deterrence in bear country. Now, I know that many of you have been waiting a long time for this video, and I want to thank you for your patience. It takes time to craft truly reliable resources. So make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you are notified the moment that video drops. And until next time, this is Mike reminding you that no one benefits from bad advice and the internet is full of it.